I'm hoping to see a little bit more of a tempered play from Battlecast because they won game one by playing as a team better than Rockport did. And then game two, they're just like, oh, let's just play it like it's fellow Q. Um, or just play like we don't care anymore because we're ahead. And, like, right. They keep doing whatever they win one game. Just a solo queue mentality. Yeah. I was just like, oh, we we won game one. We can we can do whatever we want. So hopefully they start listening to their freaking pick band coach again. Um, that would help them out. But I mean, Rockport they're gonna need to adapt here because of so Faithful coming into top and Andy as well. Their pick band definitely needs to change. So you're saying they didn't listen to their pick band last time? Uh, considering Neon was in the chat going, I don't know why they picked this and why they didn't listen to me. I would assume they did not listen to Neon because Neon does all the pick band. Oh, okay. That's what he was saying in the Twitch chat. <laughs> I did not. I did not see that. Yeah, he was. He was whining about the whole time. Are you sure he truly was whining about it, and he's not trying to cover for himself being a stupid person? Mm, pretty sure. But we'll have to see. Lissandra banned away from Business Trooper, and of course, the Ergot away from Fox. But I mean, they could have taken Ergot for his pick. They could have. I don't think they yeah. want to though. For whatever reason. Well, it is a strong pick. It is one of those picks that myself personally and probably everybody that plays Urgot, he is a very, very boring champion to play. He's like He's like Alistair if he was if he had damage. Like Alistair is like one of those champions where like you have to have fun with the champion to really enjoy playing that champion, like regardless of if it's strong or not. It's just, it's one of those champions It's just really boring to play. Because you either win lane, or you go even in lane. Or even if you don't win lane, you're still just sitting there doing nothing in lane. You rarely ever get solo kills with the champion. As I picked up for Hydrian though, it's a little interesting. They went for that. The Tristana was up, and that is kind of his go-to. But Bard was left up, so Andy's going to find that pick for himself. And they're going to couple it with the Jin King D's not so favorite favorite champion yeah which is weird because it's like 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 you said like you say he doesn't like it but at the same time i feel like every time i've heard him talk about it he likes it <laughs> so. he's always telling people he doesn't like it i don't know yeah. but he picks but he, it up he a always lot seems he does to well do well it. with it at least when i see him on it right i mean i think he just dislikes everything is the issue that's like probably one of the only Ada carries that I'll ever actually play other than Jinx. Like just because like he's so brain dead. Like he's well, he's got four shots that you either land or you just misclick on accident. And then everything else is just casting abilities. It's he's like one of those champions he's really hard to play bad with unless you're just bad at the game. Or with that champion. Yeah, two tanks being grabbed for Rockport, though, is going to be pretty effective into a Jin, not the most hyper of carries, and Rockport not changing up their picking strategy too much here. We'll see if Battlecast adapt and start banning away some tanks from Sean Bear, but they first yeah. need to pick something here. Going to be a Gnar for Faithful Fox. Yeah, which I believe, if I recall seeing him play top, I believe that was one of the times I did see him play top was with that Gnar, and he did do okay with it. Wasn't anything spectacular, but he did good. And again, before, like what you were saying, how Rockport didn't change much, that is one thing, too, Rockport is very good at. Uh, unless they are completely banned out from what they used before, they are very good at finding like a style that works, and then especially when it comes to playoffs, they never change it. Like They'll keep running the same thing until they get banned out. Yeah, um, I wonder what they're going to ban here. Maybe they're going to ban the Velcast again, because Lux was not that bad. Um, but we'll see what they ban against T-Viper or Sh Sean Bear, if they decide. I would say probably just take more tanks away, because you're in this kind of low damage comp. And it's going to be nothing. Um... Questioning maybe lag or something. I don't know. I'm surprised they're not be. dodging it's, if that's the case. It's it's faithful fox. Oops. Yeah, they're gonna dodge. 
Yeah. It wouldn't let him lock in the ban. That's faithful. He was lagging before. Why wouldn't he be lagging now? <laughs> <laughs> He's still lagging. Damn it, faithful. This is game three, right? We're going to. Yeah, this is game three. Uh... A best of five, correct? Yeah. So we can Quarters, have up to... Quarters through finals are always best of fives. Yeah, so we could have up to another three games. No, don't say that. That means more stats work, and on top of that, more casting work. True. That's like the only thing I'll say that I've always hated about, like when games like go to three game series all the time, because it always made it like more boring to have to do the same game over and over and over again. The only nice thing is generally a majority of the stuff is pretty easy to put in. Because once you get in a rhythm, you can just kind of tab through everything. Casters are never R. I mean, casters are. Complete thirty five worlds quest. Missions are a good idea, but I feel like they're only good when you're a new account, and then, like, if you don't own any champions. But still not the best for once you own everything. I still have one freaking mission that it won't let me do. What's that? The watch and learn. What is that? Log into the thing and, and, and watch a full game where I've watched an entire set of a read broadcast because I can't watch the actual games because they're way too late because Korea. Did you watch through the website it has you log into? Yep, I've watched through that. Uh, I don't know then because it worked for me. And I don't even have to watch the full thing. Like I just logged in like to the website like that it sent me to after clicking on the mission. And then I like clicked on a video, just had it going in the background, and then add, once I was out of the game, it said I got the quest. Yeah, I had that. It didn't work. Same pick bands. All right, they were able to do the ban this time. That is good news. Let's see what they pick here hopefully they save counter pick for business reaper they are going to grab the rengar they're going pretty aggro again which i think could be a mistake yeah and again their team is also even squishier than the last team was so like last team they still at least had a little bit of a leeway with their team being a moderately tanky team to survive whereas like this team is now like super squishy compared to the last team and they still have the same amount of hearts you see that they had in the past so interesting though Sean we're going for Ramus 
I mean, it's all ma or all physical damage right now from Battlecast, so it's a pretty decent pick for that. Still has good gank pressure, um, and there's really yeah. nothing to stop him from getting in. So there's no reason not to go for something like this, especially with again how weirdly Battlecast has started drafting. Yeah, which makes sense, but um, I guess from my perspective, it's just I don't know if he's played Ramus in the past or if it's just been a while since I've seen him play it. But I, I it's been yeah. quite a while. Who knows? Now, oh, here's an interesting uh, higher, uh, well, uh, higher uh, over under. We could do Rangar necklaces by a certain time. Uh, we would probably just do how many stacks does he end the game with. But you can only have like five stacks. Right. Does he complete it? Does he not complete it? He probably will complete it. I don't think he will. That. Not against their team? Not against this comp, no. There's no way he completes that. He'd have Unless to kill, they steamroll. He'd have to kill Alistair and Ramus, two champions of which I highly doubt he's ever going to one-shot. Unless he gets, like, elastic kill. Like, the only one I see him killing is, like, maybe Nautilus early. But, like, the only two he's gonna kill is the Vilkaz and Zaya. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still baffled by Battlecast's drafting choices here. The Jin Bard is definitely the right choice, but they keep letting Business Trooper's pool get picked when he's, like, so good on, like, the Swain and the RA. And he's gonna get banned out in the second phase if they go for that counter pick. So you might as well just grab him something early. Because Faithful Fox, I don't think they're going to pinch his pool that hard, right? They're not going to throw a Gnar ban at him. He barely plays Gnar in solo queue. And I think at this point, you need to try and empower one of your better players rather than possibly just giving over the entire pick ban based off of wanting a counter pick, which you're not even getting a counter pick anymore because everything that you play got banned. Yeah, and generally, like... Even when they do ban against people on Battlecast, when the Faithful Fox comes through, it's going to be Business and Andy that they ban out. They generally almost never ban out anybody else. So, and there's three, there's five bans I can think of that would go towards those two players. Like, at most, it'll be Bard Thresh and then, like, Lissandra, Swain, Ari. Like, those would be, like, the five that they might ban. And my question is, why are they putting Adrelin on Rengar when he could have just gotten Zinn again? Zinn did very well and showed up. But Rengar, especially into Team Cup, when he picked Rengar, it was, he knew there was a Nautilus and a Alistar. So, yeah. Two characters are just going to lock him down immediately and make it impossible for him to get anything done. I don't know. Battlecast is throwing all drafting sense out the window which is a little bit of a shame to see but rockport being able to hold strong and adapt pretty well with these heavy tanks yeah which like i was saying before like when you're a team like it well it's okay to still have some fun you still want to do play like as hard as you can like not saying that they're not but like when you're giving yourself the overconfidence lead like a team like rockport like will steamroll that lead Yep. That's just the kind of team that they are. That's how we won last season, and that's how they've pretty much continued to win despite all the roster changes after last season. Like, once we get a win, like, we're really good at, like, forcing the rest of the wins. Yeah, I mean, Rock Rockport is one of the more mentally resilient teams. That is correct. But we are about to load into game three here. So the wait is over yeah and unless um adrenaline is like like i think we can we can see masteries yeah um, unless our like a hot is like a rengar main and they're going straight for comfort then i don't understand any reason why rengar would be even remotely picked well he's got a skin for him so he's he must have played him <laughs> And go fast. I mean, I have I have DJ Stoney. Uh, same with Spirit Guard, dude. Here. 
which team has the cooler skins? I just I I have to say Rockport purely because I I that Lunar Empress Lux I hate because it's just a knockoff Elementalist. Mm. And because Muka Alistair is the best skin in the game. Yeah. Yeah, I like Muka and Chrome Ramus. Zaya's skin is kind of eh. And the other two don't have skins, but I do like the Jin Bard skins. See, this is why you need Draven. Draven, Draven, Bard, Bard. Unfortunately, nobody here plays Draven. I do. Well, that plays in the league. <laughs> I used to. But yeah. Even that I was mid lane, so it wouldn't matter. But yeah. I think you uh, did play it, bring it out though as a meme game towards the end though, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I think I do remember that. It, it was for fun, but um... Yeah, it was like yeah. towards the end of the season. It was, it was my last game. Alright, I'll be right back. I have to check what's going on downstairs. Standard five point coming out from both sides, kind of, other than battle cast. Doesn't look like any team is really going to go for anything here. Alistair doing the old cowbell and bard being a BM player. Yeah, I mean, a good chunk of damage is going to help out a solid amount. Um... Uh, did you start the bet or did you never start it? No, because we never decided. Ah. Nobody's watching anyways. What do you mean nobody's watching? <laughs> I don't know. Not too many people are watching or interacting anymore. Yeah, to be honest, I think the bets did kind of die out towards the end of the season. Like, even when I was saying, like, basically all through playoffs until semis, like, I was, like, the only person that bet. <laughs> yeah, I will toss that in there. Faithful taking a little bit of a bad trade here. Um, if we cannot walk up melee to a Nautilus level one, that just does not work. But... Slash Andy doing his work already using the Ignite onto Hydreo and getting him below 200 health. Yeah, and forcing him to burn that pot, so he's going to have to basically play passive the rest of this lane. Because if he by chance ever happens to get autoed or queued by Slash Andy, it could mean death with Jin waiting in the back line. Nar angry face. Look at that Nar angry face. Mm. <laughs> it's like the only thing I love about that skin. When he starts going into Mega Nar, he gets angry. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, Hydro just so keeps taking these hits. Bard is running out of mana, but I'd say job well done so far. Just with how much pressure they've been able to apply to this bot lane that they have kind of just been losing the first couple times. Ignite, not Ignite, sorry. Smite does come down for Sean Bear. He gets, or er, yeah, he did get the blue buff. Yeah, he got the blue buff, and now yeah. Rengar is trying to run away, and he's actually getting caught here, having to burn the flash. Yeah, really just... nice dodge from the hook, though. He's going to be able to get out of there now. A little bit of trouble for Business Trooper as Shumber trying to find his way Ooh. in, but that's just going to be a first blood for the Faithful Fox. Now he's able to run forward with these double buffs onto 100T Noob. There is no flash anymore on this Nautilus, so he's going to be going down, and that's going to be a kill for Adrenaline. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. They did still try to go for that with as many people that, was, that were there. I mean, it was a 3v3, but Sean was already kind of chunked, despite not being too chunked. It was enough from the invade from Adrenaline that damage they got off, and then Lux landing the bind. He was pretty much already under half HP by the time everybody collapsed. Yeah, and that is going to be the 
only issue for this early game, Ramis, is his best target right now is kind of a Lux, and Lux has a, you know, a line skill shot that's going to stop this Ramis from being able to get in if he's not kiting properly, and if you're just running straight at him. All right. Doorbell. But looks like Shamir is trying to find his way down bottom. As Juice doesn't land the headbutt pulverized, but the Ramus is in. Flash in from Juice with the trample. They should be able to find the kill onto Andy here as he does flash out, trying to get the faithful, or sorry, the uh, magical journey, but he still does fall down to that ignite. Now, 100T noob in a lot of trouble as this red buff from Faithful Fox doing so much work, and he's at the point where he can almost start to dive. All he needs is another auto attack or two to really proc that hyper, and Lots of power going over to Faithful Fox in this top side. He went for a little bit of a weird build, going for Grasp rather than something like the Fleet Footwork or the Airy. Um, so we'll have to kind of keep an eye on that and see how that really pays off in the long run. As he does, again, keep trying to zone off this Nautilus, but actually taking a pretty rough trade. He's about to go down the flash out, but he still manages to die. Now Slash Andy is back in, doesn't find the stun. Juice now running away, doesn't have flash either, but here comes Sean Bear again, rolling his way in. Oh, well, I have two kills now, what happened? Uh, missed... Faithful entered, and Slash Andy got killed by Ignite. Ah. Yeah, Faithful <laughs> just played like a really stupid person. As Andy cancels three autos. I had ordered food a little bit ago. Mm, that's what I figured. Yeah. I don't blame you. Food sounds pretty good right now. Might dip out for some ice cream here in a few. I'm kidding. Yeah, it's actually what I got. Believe it or not. You ordered ice cream? Yep. Well, because I already had food earlier before. Uh... You can get door delivered ice cream? Yep. That's There's a weird. thing called DoorDash, if you're familiar with that. Yeah, I just wouldn't pay a delivery fee for ice cream. Yeah. Well, this place is really good, but the only problem is, is that it's like in our downtown, which is probably 30 minutes away from where I live, and I'm like, hey. mm, That's rough. So I don't, yeah, I don't really want to drive down there. Well game is still actually fairly in Battlecast's favor because they do have such big CS leads in all three of their solo lanes, or three of their lanes, not just solos. Um, but like mid lane at top, all up about 10 CS. Oh my god, this global bard noise is so tilting. <laughs> what do you mean? It's so comforting. It makes oh. watching the game so peaceful. <laughs> they need to fix these global indicators and noises. But Shamber has found his way up top. We're gonna see if he can roll on and maybe just up here while he backs to thwart off any he kind of gank. It, so I'm pretty sure he did see it when that minion wave moved up. So I, I believe so. There. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna... Just keep trying to bait him in. Spamming laugh. Was, yeah, I mean, Sean Barry is spending a lot of time up here. Did finally recall, but there's a pretty good level lead right now for the Rengar, and it looks like with the... Uh, the bard they're actually going to try and get something done hydreon doesn't have his flash he's going to get hit by that uh that knock up sorry the the root and that is going to be a kill going over to adrenaline as hydreon does fall down got to respect that bard through the wall and that is the power of bard yeah it's something that Battlecast likes to do in general, whether it's with the Bard or the Tom Kench, is they'll duck out into that um, kind of backside and just either ult behind you or use that magical journey to bring the jungler in. And it's, it's a very reliable play from them that really hasn't done them wrong yet. So they're going to get an advantage, mm -hmm. get themselves a dragon, almost 2k up right now. And again, a lot of that is just <clears throat> off of CS leads as there's, again, a lead in every single lane right now. Yeah, this place, uh, the fee is only $2, so it's not that, that bad. That's fair. Like, yeah, so I was like, eh, get some. From a Ooh, place called... Visit Cult Trooper finding good chunk place. of damage off on a Sean Bear. Does need to be careful, though, because there is Heat Viper coming around. He's already getting hit by the slow, but the ultimate from the Bard might be enough to help him start turning this around. The flash out from Heat Viper, he's going to get to safety, but had to suddenly burn his defensive summoner. 
King D gets hit by this root. Really good job from Hydreon. Yeah, a lot of really just kind of small trades. However, I'd say uh, Battlecast are still in the lead. Pretty much all their lanes have CS advantages everywhere. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah. It'll be interesting to see if Rockport can really pull anything off here. I just realized I've been muted and I've been trying to ask DHA a question every time I try saying saying it, something happens. DHA, you live in New York, right? If you're getting nope. Spectrum. Huh? I live in uh, Milwaukee. Uh. <laughs> yep, the big MKE. Hence my uh, clan pig. Wait a second. Oh god. Are we... Wait, why is there this this effect on the cyan? Uh -huh. Do you see the effect? The on heart? Valley? Yeah. It's yeah, all effects just kind of last forever. Oh, remember the Warwick last week? Yeah. It was I was watching another league and they someone locked in Warwick and they were just like, "Oh yeah, yeah." And I was just like, oh no, I know what's about to happen. And they were all freaking out. They're like, what's going on? Why is this effect everlasting? I'm just like, you'll get used to it, buddy. <laughs> just wait till a Twitch hops in and goes invisible. Speaking <laughs> <laughs> which, how did the game go on Sunday? Uh, Battlecast DOV set? Yeah. It went well. DOV took him to five games. It was really close. Mm -hmm. DOV played really, really well. But, yeah, it was it was definitely more than what people expected out oh, of them. Ooh, really nice ult from Slash Andy Juice. Not gonna be trying to disengage, but a flash used from Hydro and still gets hit by the Dudley Flourish and a big chunk of damage onto him. This Battlecast's gonna have a lot of control in the spot side, potentially looking for a dive. They just need to get this wave in position. King D is moving it up. The flash in from Andy. The stun's gonna land. That should be a kill going over to Adrenaline. A killing spree for him. Now Andy trying to get out of here, but he does fall to the tower shot. 100 Noob uses his TP though. Now they need to be careful because here is the Lux. But the rest of Rockport is quite a distance away, so it's gonna be a lot onto King D to try and get this done as fast as possible. But here comes the Ramus. He is managing to make his way in. As now Adrenaline still trying to chase forward. A nice binding in the ultimate from the Lux. Gonna be able to finish him off in the curtain call just kind of used in their faces it doesn't matter though as juice didn't have the trample stacks to get the stun off which means a 4 0 and 2 on adrenaline and we are going to be okay. in a pretty good spot right now all that leaves is velkaz and alistair for his necklace yeah i mean this is what they need to do to get the necklace finished is just kind of pop off we weren't sure if he was going to be able to do it but it is working out so far for him. Again, kind of a situation where Shumbear not able to find too many ganks, nor counter ganks for himself as King D does have flash if he needs to get out of here. Probably will, unless he gets this heal. Yeah, he's going to be fine. Yeah, which is why, while it is all a D team, at the same time, like, yeah, oh my god, that combo was so clean, but Sean Bear gets the taunt onto Business Trooper under the tower, so he's going to fall down to that chilling smite. Now Faithful needs to run away, no flash anymore. He's just going to need the hop as the wallop does land, but I think he's just going to be ran down by this Ramus. Maybe not as a move speed, not quite there. The slow, I think this is going to be Faithful barely getting out of here. And again, like, while it is an all AD team, like, Ramus can be good into those, but he just does not in my opinion, provide really enough gank pressure, at least early, if you're not amusing his speed to really get lanes ahead like other champions, like the... like, other than the Zac or Sejuani, which while those are banned, I know he has some other picks other than that that he probably could have played. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure what he all plays, Jungle. Oh yeah, even like Rek'Sai. He could have even played Rek'Sai. Yeah, I think the Rek'Sai would have been pretty decent. I know that it, it, it seems like they're just trying to go really heavy on to this just full tank line to try and shut down Battlecast plays like they did in game two. But, I mean, Battlecast with actual picks this time is going to make it a little bit more difficult. They still don't have a great late game, and if Rockport gets a scale and install this out, they'll be fine. But they are 4k down right now, and at 14 minutes, that can be pretty scary. <clears throat> Yeah, 
Yeah, be working up down. Yeah, and it's, oh my god, another great ult from Slash. And he's not going to be able to get this done as the Feather Storm did come out. But so much damage coming from King D. And the Deadly Flourish not going to land, but a nice play caller. It's going to stop that engage. But they just had to burn a lot again just to get out of that. Again, Slash Annie on this bar. It is so impactful. It's a pick you can't let slide through unless you really have a good answer to it. You know, which teams quickly always remember why teams always ban it, because generally if they let it get through one, then they end up banning it the next, <laughs> so... Right. And they get solo gold onto the Jin in the bot side off that tower. They get another dragon for themselves, escalating to a 5k gold lead. And the nice thing is they do have the opportunity to make plays with this kind of lead because of the Bard and the Jin and the Lux, right? They've got a lot of opportunities there to find picks and kind of force stuff out probably for about the next 10 or 15 minutes um, before it really gets difficult to start breaking through the Rockport tank line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> and at this point it's going to be if Rockport can slow down the deaths that are happening and just scale into the late game. Because like, if they could scale into the mid to late game and get their tanks some items, get their tanks to start tanking damage, like, they will eventually, like, stop all this killing potential that Battlecast has early and start actually doing what they need to do. And that's, like, basically CC any of their carries that they see and then burst them down with the Battlecast or Zaya. Yes, oh my god, another ult from Slash Andy trying to get the stun off one of the wall. Doesn't quite time it right as here comes Sean Bear. He's going to get killed <laughs> quite quickly. Went just a little bit too aggressive there. Is now adrenaline in the top side. Hex Flash gonna use backwards as Hydro is so low. The Tedley Flourish lands. And he has no chance here. King D's gonna run at him and pick up his first kill of the game. Now adrenaline putting in some more hurt. And they are just forcing the that was issue. A, uh, that was an uh, interesting oops, that probably just run moment. <laughs> <laughs> he was like charging his Hex Flash to go in and then just flashed away. <laughs> yeah. You saw him, like, charging in. Overall, I mean, to be honest, the only real tank, like, person who can really kill the front line late game, it isn't Jin, because Jin's just gonna, they're, he's not gonna deal that much damage to them, but he does, R does have his hyper. It isn't that strong, but it's still something. Yeah, I mean, he, he can get through tanks pretty well. He is going for more of a team fighting build. It looks like he's going for a Frozen Mallet next instead of something like the Blade of the Rune King. So he will be okay at getting through the tanks. But Jin actually is deceptively strong against tanks, especially this season with the true damage on the Infinity Edge. Um, and he still does, you know, a big percent health hit with his fourth shot. It's not as good as other hyper carries, say like a Kai'Sa or a Tristana. But it's not like he's going to be worthless against them. Yeah, it's just you just can't be ulting when they're at full HP just to pick off one person, which I highly doubt he will do. But it's it's just that his ult can do minuscule damage to the tanks as well. Uh, yeah, which is fair to be expected. But oh my god, another stun lands onto Hydro. It's a little bit of a shame that King T auto attacked a minion instead of Hydro, and otherwise that actually just would have been a kill. But I mean, Slash Annie putting so much work into this 2v2, and they're pretty much going to force them back here. I don't think Sean Bear can run in and try and make any play for the team, and should be another tower going inside of Battlecast. Just for their spending, extending their gold lead. Yeah, not really having anybody to, that can really defend against the bot lead of Battlecast right now, being as far ahead as they are. They just kind of have to give it up right now. Yeah, that's a 50, over 50 CS gold lead, but a CS lead. Yeah, I mean, 53 CS lead for the Jin, almost a 20 CS lead. Oh my god, that was a really nice ult from Zaya to dodge out of that. Yeah, almost a 20 CS lead for Lux, 40 CS lead for Nar. They are just completely crushing in CS. The kills are close to even, but the towers and the CS lead is the big thing right now that's keeping um, Battlecast ahead. And they definitely just need to keep it up because they aren't overstepping and they just keep getting objectives.
But because they're actually putting on so much pressure in so many places at once, it's hard for Rockport to truly find any way in, right? If they try and send everybody up top, this Nar is going to take the spot tower, right? Lux can get there pretty quick. Adrenaline's doing so much in the jungle, making sure that there's no farm for Rammus to get to. And they're just actually starving out all of Rockport at once right now. Yeah, meanwhile, they're just getting getting ahead, well, even more ahead, and just getting their items so that if Rengar does, like, well, not if Rengar, but if Rockport does if, try to start a fight, they'll be more than happy to refight and win it. Yep. Yeah, Jin now at his second item. They still have the Herald as well. Hopefully they don't kind of waste it in front of an Alistar this time. Um... <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, but they will have to use it soon, though, because the Rift Herald is starting to kind of run out. It is probably only got a little bit, a little bit over a minute. What they could do is they um something that I remember hearing a lot what, about a play was put the Herald in bot lane, well, and then send everyone top. And it's because that you have to deal with either the Herald getting a lot of stuff, or or you give up Baron. Right. Yeah, it's definitely an option. It's usually a better option if you have something like a Varus or a Kaiser that can really shred through Baron, because Jin not going to be able to burst through it too quick. But it's still the kind of play that you do want to see, where you kind of make a cross-map play, right? They need to keep splitting Rockport up, making it so that they have to make one decision or the other. And so I think they should call it in bot and then try and head to this top side, maybe push in that wave if they can. But right now they are grouping up, looking like they might try and go for a team fight pretty soon. Yeah, it looks like they are looking for that mid tower. There is Rockport Soul grouping up as well. Yeah, or it actually maybe 100T Noob is in trouble. The ultimate from the Bard should be stalling this out just a little bit. The stun does land both from the Bard and the Gnar. They're spending so much on this though as Shambear tries to flash in, but Adrenaline it should start calling in this Herald. Maybe just wants yeah, to keep an eye out for sure. the uh, Alistar. He is calling it in. It has been dropped. Nice disintegration ray from Heat Viper just to try and stall this out. And then really good ultimate from Business Trooper bringing everybody so low. They are able to stop the Herald, though. Wow. And they do find a kill on Desire, though, as Bard. This does so much damage from that backside. Really hard to keep track of. He's going to go for a flank here. And King D is mid lane right now as Business Trooper flashes in. Just making sure that Shambar can't back. Keeping up the pressure. Now Andy over the wall. How much can he get done? The stun lands on the Heat Viper. And the cleanse out. But he's still in a lot of trouble. He's going to fall down. And King D gets mid. Meanwhile, Bot Tower falls. And Battlecaster just going to keep on pushing. Yeah, but he actually picked that kill up off on Zaya. Off the back of an auto on Alistair. He autoed Alistair and the AoE that came out from behind that is actually what killed him. Yeah, and 100 T noob trying to save that tower, but still a lot of health on most of Battlecast. They're going to be able to get this bottom lane inhib. And now they can maybe start looking to make some kind of Baron play. Rengar only needs one more tooth. I don't know if anyone voted, but... I don't think anybody did. No, nobody voted, so it really doesn't matter. But, I mean, this is a huge 12k gold lead right now for Battlecast. It's exactly what they needed to do with their comp, because, as we were saying beforehand, their comp definitely not as sound as Rockport's, but if you're making the plays early that you can, it doesn't matter how good the late game is. And that's kind of what this meta is all about. It's what we've been seeing at Worlds, and, right, it's just... you. You see the clash of trying to go late game versus, you know, playing these early game comps that can get advantages. And typically the early game comps have been actually winning out as of late. What is that effect from? Like those hearts? I don't know. Rengar ult. Is I that the Rengar ult? Or would it be a heart? It looks like a love heart rather than like a kill you heart. But it might be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's getting thicker though. Like it's just a thick, like red oval now. <laughs> it... Oh, it's because he, because if you hear it, you can hear the heartbeat. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's definitely getting worse. <laughs> I hate spectate right now. It's Warwick, so it's bad. All over again. Just Warwick. It's I a would trail. say this is worse than work. Actually, the work one is really annoying because like it just. The way it follows them is really awkward, but this one is like, it's actually just like this big, like a red orb. 
I guess we won't ever lose track of them in a fight, though. So that's the nice thing. <laughs> I mean, I hey, mean, it's better go? than the Twitch. What was the Twitch one? When he went invis, oh. it just kept the invis particle effects on him the entire game. What do you mean? So, like, when he goes invisible, how he gets, like, that kind of ghosty trail around him? Yeah. And that just sticks on him. In spectate. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you just see this, like, glowing twitch running around. You're like, is he invis? Is he not invis? I can't tell. <laughs> but, yeah, this is definitely going pretty well for Battlecast. They have a TP advantage, so they can start sending do uh, Faithful down here. I was about to call him Doodle. But 100 to Noob, out of mana. Going to be trying to run away from Adrenaline. Lots of damage coming out from this Rengar, but it is a fairly tanky Nautilus, so <laughs> can't lots actually get anything done, sadly. <laughs> it said lots of damage, and he took out, like, 200 HP. <laughs> yeah. Well, one would hope he does lots of damage. If he had a Black Cleaver, he'd be doing lots of damage. Oh, yeah. But he's not getting one of those. Yeah, I don't know why he's not either. It's against so many tanks, like, you really want that late game assurance. They really should just be setting up around this Baron and sending Faithful Bot mm. to like just pressure in these uh, uh, super minions. But wow, Hydreon getting so low. And Business wow. doesn't even need <laughs> the ult. It misses, and he still manages to find the kill. And Hydreon not having a very good game for himself. 0-5-1. Oh, uh, looking a little bit uncomfortable on the Zaya. Did really well on the Lucian two games in a row. But now in a little bit of trouble as Battlecast are starting up the bear and Shambar is going to try and roll around, but he is two levels down, meaning if he finds his way into the pit, he is at a disadvantage. Now Shambar running away. The spooky ghost is going to land on him with the deadly flourish. That's going to be a dead armadillo. As Battlecast don't fully commit to the Baron quite yet, they're going to turn it back to him now, though. And I wouldn't really say it's probably uncomfort. I'd say it's just more of an unlucky matchup because while... You do have the Elster, and while their bot lane is technically more squishy than the damage that Saya puts out, their consistent poke and long range engage, like just the amount of damage that they can do that the Saya has to tolerate with, is just not good for his lane. Yeah, it's definitely and it, very And it cool. makes him really have to struggle early and just give up a lot of free things that he technically probably shouldn't have to. Right. If he was on somebody like the Lucian. Lucian was banned, though, so you can't really blame him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he did have the Tristana, though, and that has traditionally been his most comfortable pick, I feel, in this season. So it's a little interesting that he stole the Zaya away. I think it was mostly as a denial pick to try and get KD off of that and onto something else. But when there is going to be a Bard picked up, and you pretty much know that, I feel like you need to respect the fact that he should be picking up that Jin Now a little bit of an engage coming in from Shamber. He burnt a lot, though, trying to get here. Now he's ever in so much trouble. Here comes Adrenaline, lots of damage. Not going to be able to find the one shot, but the th four, wow. five man Bartle, if you include his teammate, going to be pretty big. Now Nullis does find his way in, but so much damage coming down. The Jin from the backside with the ult doing a lot. Double kill for Business Trooper. Now Hydreon trying to get in, but he's just going to fall down instead. That's a triple kill for the Lux. They make it a quadril. Can he get the Penta kill? It's going to be handed over, possibly, and he gets the Penta kill for Business Trooper. And here comes the incoming bard ban. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Because as I stated before, every team that always lets the bard go through quickly realizes why every team that bans bard always bans bard. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I think Bard was a huge factor in this game. Business Trooper popping off at the end there with the Pentakill and Battlecast. Literally, a second they got... I'm not going to say the second they got onto the rift, because the first, like, three minutes were pretty slow, right? But as soon as they could put their foot on that gas pedal, there was no brakes. They never shifted gears lower. They just kept going higher and higher and higher. And pretty dominant game three from Battlecast. Not finished. Not, not close. Probably because in that last fight, he was just sitting in the bush. Yeah, and we'll go ahead and take a quick look at damage numbers. Really low numbers, but that is to be expected. The shorter the game, the lower the numbers. It is a, an escalating uh, curve. But still, I mean, no one in Brockport peaked 10k. Um, so pretty good job there from Battlecast. They did what they needed to do. Adrenaline popped off so hard early. Slash Andy in the bot lane. Just so much pressure onto Hydro and Andrews. Just... Damage after damage after damage onto that lane and faithful yeah, holding top lane as well. I, I feel like Battlecast just played that entire match perfectly. 
Yeah, and a lot of the setup plays that Andy was setting up there were just, like, amazing. Like, there's a couple, like, I saw where he autoed, I think, Hydreon, and then Flash Q to try to stun maybe both, but then was still able to at least stun Hydreon because then Alistair flashed out, but then left Hydreon to die. And they yeah. still were able to pick up the kill. And then there was a lot of really good alts that he had to set up other plays around the map. And his barb play was amazing. So I think Andy gets MVP. You think Andy? Andy. Andy yeah. or Adrenaline. Yeah, I think Andy, just because, um, right, It's they've needed bot lane to really do really well in game two. They just absolutely got crushed bottom lane. And so Andy coming in with the bard completely turned that lane around for them. Uh, and I think it's just it did so much work. Always found engages with his ult, just constantly setting his team up for success. I think Andy definitely deserves that. Um, I think Business Trooper and Adrenaline definitely close seconds. But yeah, I think Andy was the big reason why they got so much done so early. You can get a pentacle, but I mean, if, if Andy's getting everything else done for your team, right? Like, every time you guys went for an engage, it was Andy with the 5 hey, and by the way, Andy set up that pentacle yeah. for you. <laughs> Andy's the one that I, landed the four-man Bartle. I, I just thought I'd let you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Not to say you did bad, because you pretend one and a pentacle <laughs> is really good, but yeah, and I mean, this is, it's it's looking a little bit difficult for Rockport, right? Because they won game two. Uh, a lot of it was off of a really questionable pick phase from Battlecast where they were picking stuff we'd never seen them play before. It was really weird, um, right? And they tried to do this heavy tank combo that they did again, um, and it didn't quite work out this time. And I'm not sure what kind of adaptation they need to do because I, I just think that the, the slow style that is coming out from Rockport and traditionally we see from them, Battlecast is just primed and ready to take advantage of. I think the first step is banning Bard. Um, I think banning the Bard needs to happen. It's a very strong pick. It does leave the Thresh open, so you might want to consider banning the Thresh as well. I know, I, I remember Ugly Color was in here once saying you either ban one or... You either ban both or you don't ban either, because you can't leave both up. Because if you ban one, he's he's just going to grab the other. So at that point, you might as well just pick your poison. And I think at this point, they just need to respect the fact that Andy is a very strong playmaking support and ban both.